Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me are Lorraine Fuller, who is a researcher at the University of Georgia, and a graduate student, Emily Kimono. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We're going to be talking about anti-coccidial sensitivity testing, otherwise known as AST. Now, uh, most poultry operations do ASTs on a regular basis. It's been around for a long time. Uh, What's new? What has been the focus of uh, your research with ASTs? I think probably the new thing that, that we've added to ASTs is that we, we have all of this new, these new tools in, in molecular biology, and that, that's PCR, and that's what Emily basically did. In the past, what we've done is we've, we've taken what the people have sent us from the field, we've looked at it visually, we've done the actual test using the different drugs, and to see what the relative sensitivities and resistances of these different coccidia from the field are. But we were we pretty much limited by our visual inspection and then the lesion score after the AST. But now we have molecular biology so that that's a lot more precise. What is in that sample, we can detect down to two or three O assist as to what the species are. So that is new. Um, and that's basically what Emily did. So Emily, tell us about that. Um, I know that they've been using PCR for other, uh, for diagnosing other diseases too. How does it fit in with ASTs and specifically what, what additional kind of data or information do you, do you get from that that uh, helps you in your communication with the, the uh, farmer? I think the best thing about PCR and what has um, set it apart from what has been done before is that you can get accurate answers. You can get it down and realize, is the species here? Do you know if it's there? And um, before, a lot of it was guessing. It was where the lesions were, what the osis looked like, and PCR has allowed us to be able to say definitively, we have Brunetti in there, we've got Maxima in there, we have Tinella in there, and it's a allowed a lot more options and kind of being able to look at farms and complexes overall and look at the trends in the United States and Canada everywhere. So. And why is this so important to producers? I mean, obviously they need to know which drugs are, are working and not working, but you, you mentioned all those different Imeria species before. Are, are Will some develop resistance to a drug faster than others? There, there is some thought that there are some that do develop resistance faster. Um, the, the, the main thing about an AST is, is that you, you have a, it's kind of the boots on the ground. You can get into that chicken house and you know what's in that house or in that complex. Usually what we have is a mix. Uh, so as things pass quicker, or you know, there's a different sensitivity to the drugs. Yes, yeah, some do become more more resistant quicker. The the thing about running PCRs with ASTs is that in the past we've always thought, well, what was predominantly in a broiler house were the big the big three: A. Servulina, Maxima, and Tinella. But now we're finding that there are other things that we never would have thought were there, like Nicatrix and Brunetti. And in now at as people are moving away from drugs, what's happening is, is they're relying more on a vaccine. And in general, the vaccines don't have the species that they don't think are in the houses, i.e. Nicatrix and Brunetti. So then you have this upsurge of these species that have not been vaccinated for that are in the houses. So that, that's what is interesting about this particular piece of work. So it's a vaccine that has been seeding the houses with these particular we, we strains We have no of idea. Uh, there, there aren't any vaccines that are presently sold in the United States that contain, or for broilers, that contain Nicatrix or Brunetti. Okay. So if, if it is, it's, a, it's an old one, probably back from, you know, back Sterwin's original vaccine. So. Emily, what um, surprises came to you during this research? I would say kind of along the lines that Lorraine uh, mentioned, when we first picked out the primers that we were going to use, we said, you know, we don't need to use Bernetti, not Nicatrix. Lorraine was like, you're not going to see that in there. And what was really fascinating is, is we did see a lot of it. We saw a lot of Midas. And I think the most interesting part to me is that it's not parallel to the vaccines. We have other Imeria there, and so that means you're not developing immunity for those species, and you could be seeing losses that you don't even understand are happening because of uh, the vaccine, so. 
So in summary, what would be the, the takeaway message to veterinarians and, and poultry producers about the, the work that you've done with AST? I think that the, the thing that veterinarians and, and companies have to remember is that the AST is an extremely good tool. It, it shows them what's in the house, it shows them the sensitivities and the resistances of what's in the house, and they can plan. Um, producers have to plan the kinds of programs that they're going to use, the rotations they're going to use, when they're going to bring the vaccine, and what kind of drugs they're going to shuttle. So it's, it's an extremely good tool so that those producers can make that decision. That, that's really the take home message and that they should always rely on, a, on an anti-coccidial sensitivity test. Well, Lorraine and uh, Emily, thank you so much for explaining all that. I know I learned a lot about AST.